welcome back to another episode of Rose Perspective. gosh i said that out of habit welcome back to for the mental girlies podcast y'all tell me what did you prefer did you like roland's perspective because we can always go back or do you like the forward thinking for the mental girlies let me know in the comments below. but today on today's podcast episode i'm shooting from home you know very homey very cozy vid um i want to talk about family and I know this is a touchy subject for a lot of you. A lot of my fa- followers, we have bonded over like having a dysfunctional family. But y'all, I gotta say, this family thing is kind of cool. I'm kind of fucking with the vibes, you know? Um, I don't argue with my dad anymore. He's still annoying and I still don't like him. I love you, dad. But I don't know. We're we're cooling. We're cooling. I think I've I've talked about this quite a bit on the pod before. Like I have made peace with the fact that I will never like always like my family. <laughs> like I don't take things this personally anymore because I'm a little bit detached. I see how things go and I get to choose how much I let someone else's energy affect me. Like, my dad, when he's in a mood, I don't have to let that affect me. Growing up, that's how it was. Like, his mood was the mood of the house. Like, if he's not happy, nobody's happy. And you can't be happy. Like, if he's in a sour mood, we all gonna feel it. Now, I just realized I don't have to take that on. Like, I'm not a kid anymore. You feel me? I pay bills. Bitch, I've been grown. I pay my bills. My bills are paid. I want to talk about your family and I want to talk about a few things. Um, I want to talk about like your first family. So the, your nuclear family, those closest to you, and it can include grandparents as well. But your first family is where you learn your first relationships that set you on the relationships you have in the future. Okay. Like the relationship you have with your father, if you're a heterosexual cisgender woman like myself, you're probably going to fuck with a dude that's similar to your father. I mean, and if you had a good relationship with your dad, you tend to look for in partners what you look for in a what you have in a father and a brother. I know I did. I looked for funniness, I looked for intelligence, I looked for handsomeness because my dad is handsome, he's smart and my brother can be funny. I learned today I was talking to Nini. Y'all know Nini, imagine she's come on the pod. And she was at my birthday dinner, and I love her so much, and I think she's great. I was talking to her, and I realized that, like, my relationship with my little sisters mean a lot to me. My relationship with my siblings are important. My little sisters are among the only people in the world. Let me, my family is among the only people in the world that have seen the worst sides of me. I'm talking like extremes. They've seen shifts. They've seen changes. They've seen sudden movements. They've seen transition. They, When you talk about a long-term relationship, look at your family. What are you learning from, from those relationships that you're then projecting and putting onto the relationships you have outside of the world, outside of your family? Like, think about it. I realized that my little sisters, I can, be, oh my gosh. I can be my true self around them, and it has helped me to be able to be my true self around others, like with Nini and with Jordan and with Dashereen. And Dashereen and I, we've had our own friendship journey, and she is like a sister to me. Like I, I don't do best friends. I do sisters. Okay. I don't do the whole, oh my gosh, you're my bestie forever, forever, wee wee. I feel like that's middle school. That's childish. What are we doing? Sisters, sister circle, women of the forest, women in the den, okay? 
women of wild wolves, all right? That's the type of woman I'm talking about. Like, we are all some cool ass women. I love my friends. I've been on this kick for a little while. I love my friends. Like, I love who I'm surrounding myself with. I love who I'm molding and learning how to become. I'm learning a lot about myself throughout my friendships and throughout my family, too. Um, Me and my family, we don't have, like, deep convos all the time. So I think that that's something that my friendships, my chosen family, if you will, has influenced on in my actual family. So the other way around. I think that my friends showing up for me and showing me that, you know, conflict doesn't have to be scary. It has allowed for like more vulnerability in myself and more vulnerability in my relationships with my family members. Like I told my dad I loved him the other day and I did it in French. So it wasn't too deep. You know how you do if you're bilingual you know, sometimes you say things in the language that you're less familiar in with so that it's a little more distant or at least that's what I do. Okay. I might have a little too much headroom if I do this, but I am so sick and tired of being on my knees and I want y'all to see this. Help me to, it's my favorite prayer. Lord, you know, it doesn't say Lord. You can, this is to whoever you pray to. I believe in Jesus. Help me to accept the mystery, to drift around in it until I'm saturated to my core and my need for rules to follow and answers to flaunt has been drenched in wonder and washed away in celebration. Oh, by Lori Hetting. I got this a few years ago. This right here, it's like the perfect prayer for the changing of seasons. I am a Virgo, which is a mutable sign which can mean chaos and which can mean like you're always in flux and I find myself always quite in transition um and so this has really been an anchor for me and it's so humbling too as soon as I start to feel like you know I don't need God or I'm too big for God my problems God can't handle or whatever this humbles me it's like and and it humbles my ego because I'm like Help me to accept the mystery, to drift around it until I'm saturated to my core and my need for rules to follow and answers to flaunt. We want answers to flaunt them. I'm digressing from my my original topic here. Can I bring this down? Y'all have seen the, y'all have seen it. Family, I guess this might be a short episode. Um, I wanted to talk for 40 minutes about family, but if I can't, Yeah, my notes are first family, siblings, and love. Like, I feel like you learn, you learn true love in some ways in your family because these are people who can't cut you off. Like, I'm talking about if you live in with your family as well. Like, and like, it's your family. They're always going to be there, you know, God willing, you know, everyone's lives are kept and secured. But family sees the worst of you and has no choice but to accept you because you're there like they have to figure out a way to live with you you can't get away from family sometimes that's not all the time but you can't get away from family all the time and this keeps you in a constant flux of change and transition to best find harmony I think subconsciously we all seek harmony in our households, like where we live, because as a human, that's something that you would want, right? Harmony in your space that you spend so much time and where you sleep and that's sacred and all the things. But I think we subconsciously seek harmony and we, in our families, like you have to figure out a way to keep going every day. Like you have to find a way to survive. And I feel like families are like marriage in that sense where you, you know, whether you chose to or not, you made a commitment to like, I don't know, be here for this person. Like you're in here. You have to figure out a way to live together and coexist. And I feel like I'm describing family in the worst way right now. Like why should it be something that you have to survive and something that, cause not all families are happy go lucky. Um, but for those out there that have, you know, and there are people in my family that I love, 
you know, it's not like I hate everybody. So it's easy to draw from those connections and be like, oh, this is actually informing the way I move throughout the world. And this is something that I can use as practice for my secondary relationships. Shout out to my little sisters. I love them. They're going to go crazy over this. But I love y'all. I love them so much. They're valedictorian and salutatorian at their school. Um, It gives, doesn't it? It gives following in big sister's footsteps. Yeah. I wasn't Valor Sal, but I graduated a year early. And I'm always going to bring that up. I'm always going to bring it up because it's me. Big L-A-T-T-O. It's me. Okay? Okay. Do y'all like these short little episodes for me? Tell me what you think. Give me some feed. <clears throat> Whoa. Give me some feedback. I need some water. What the fuck? All right. I'm going to let y'all go. I guess I won't hold you hostage here. Thanks for watching my video. I really appreciate you. I hope it helps you throughout your day. I hope it gave you some inklings. I hope it gave you something to think about. And I will hear y'all in the next one. Bye. Yeah.